Education is knowledge. Knowledge is power. It takes knowledge to live and survive in this world. We're here to um, develop as people, as, as human beings. And I think that the more that we develop, or the more that we learn, the more that we can develop. If you have good education, then you have the right qualifications to get the jobs you want and need. So, yeah, see it as like insurance. Um, education to me is a, a complete privilege for many people, um, but it's also something that I think should be available to as many people as possible. I think that it is unfair, completely unjustified, that certain members of society, the wealthier members, have, can afford to pay for education, where the poorer members of society cannot pay for higher or university education. I think that is social discrimination. Like education gives you the freedom to like make your own mind up about things and kind of self-direct your learning, which like you're never ever allowed to do prior to that. You know, the illusion of like self-directed learning is there for you, like options and things like that, but it's it's not self-directed, it's still within the confines of like what they want you to be engaged with. I, I tend to think of it in, in quite naturalistic terms that uh, um, we're, we're learning creatures, I think, human beings, and it's quite a natural process, uh, which we do all the time. We're trying to, always trying to work out what's going on, trying to understand each other, trying to understand situations, trying to understand our lives, trying to understand what's going on in our society. Maybe we get interested in something in politics or something like that. We're always trying to learn about things, and, you know, if you think right back to little babies who are sort of always curious, always playing, always experimenting. So I tried to think of it as a, which I think we've got away from, as a, it's quite a natural process. Education changes you. It broadens your mind, it, it changes you as a person. You can't help but change. And for the better, you know, you, the more you know, knowledge is power, you empower yourself. So by learning, even if you're by osmosis, you know, you're just taking it all in and you're, you're improving yourself. It's like exercise, but exercise for the mind. Education is, does give you the freedom to make choices. It brings people out of their social group and classes and it gives them access to the world, really. I think if you're not educated, sadly, you don't have access to the world and you don't... I think education to make, um, should make bring out the best of everybody and let them achieve their potential in life and living. It means that you, you know, you kind of uh, have a choice, you know, like, I feel like when you, when you gain education, you gain knowledge, and when you gain knowledge, you then have more choices and options because you have a greater understanding of the different things that are going on. Um, and so, you know, whether those things are kind of local politics or national or international, you just have a, a bigger, greater understanding. I think it's about understanding the world that you live in. Um, it's um, about informing yourself about things that are going on, but it's about enjoying, enjoying yourself, like learning for the sake of learning. There's so many new things to find out all the time. Um, so, yeah, learning used to be school, didn't it? It used to be the thing you had to go to. Um, and uh, I guess as you get older, you can unlearn all that stuff and learn what you actually want to learn. School's a sort of place. I mean, w one of the things that really typified school for me was I'd moved from Manchester when I was 11 to, to sort of like near Oldham and Rochdale and places like that. And it was a big shock because you're a new kid in the class and you, you had to work your way in. So otherwise you start off with what they used to call in those days, like the spastic kids and that. So you're just there and everybody sort of picks on you at first and then you go through you get to fights as a boy and you go through all that bit and then you get to a certain um, 
level and stuff at school are people of respect for you and that becomes really important to you so while I was going through that period of not getting much regard or respect from fellow people I was really good I was really ahead and I was put up a class because I had nobody to relate to I was just bullied I had to watch out for the bullying but otherwise I was reading and things like that as soon as I got to sort of hang out with people they demoted me about three classes I was rubbish <laughs> academically in that way most people understand education to mean something like training, so learning how to do something. Um, and I think that's how it's increasingly become sort of told to people and, and taught to people. Education is learning how to do something. And I think um, the important thing about education is learning how to be yourself, learning how to be capable of thinking, how to be capable of being free. One thing that um, I think of a lot, and I think sort of the free university captures this the spirit is that Mount Nelson Mandela once said education is the most important weapon you can use to change the world so I hope in a small way we're sort of educating people to change if not the world at least the things in their own lives or their own communities Well, I started FUB in 2012 and the government had trebled tuition fees um, and there were the student protests which didn't really achieve very much and I remember being quite inspired by the Occupy uh, movement and I went to London, the Occupy London site which was out of St Paul's and there was this tent city university and basically people, it was just a tent right outside on the street by St Paul's Cathedral and people were sort of educating each other about like global economics and things like that and I thought that was really inspiring the way that people coming together and becoming collectively conscious about the world and particularly about inequality and so I was very inspired by that and I thought to myself actually if you could just put a tent in a street in London and educate people the sorts of things that they wouldn't wouldn't be taught in schools and colleges and universities if you can do that just for a few weeks why couldn't you do that on a permanent basis? Why couldn't you use, why couldn't every towns and cities use free public spaces and just do that, you know, ultimately forever, if you like? I help train people, uh, encourage people to come into the centre to further their um, education. So a lot of people would, were deprived of edu education in their earlier life. Um, they didn't fulfil the, uh, their school. They, um, went by the wayside. I've got lots of stories of why this has happened. The lesson we had about education said that education had become less equal since the 70s. And of course I left school thinking that things were all progressing in a positive direction and it's rather shocking to find out that they've gone backwards. Because I was interested in philosophy, because I sort of trained in philosophy, that began in a process of conversation with Socrates. Um, and a small class setting is what we might call it now in our modern language. Um, and actually that is not only, I think, the best way for the student to learn, it's also the most interesting way for the tutor or the lecturer to teach. So I'm sitting in, you know, a FUB induction meeting and Ali's going through the FUB values and so on and so forth. And I, well, I don't disagree with any of them. And that was such an unusual situation um, when I was just finished retiring, I just finished at university, um, which, you know, their values were increasing, increasingly alien to me and made me sick to the pit of my stomach at times, you know. So, it, so it, it was great, the idea of a space which challenged that sort of education, which promoted um, a form of education which, uh, with which I agreed, you know, and particularly the free bit. Yeah, in fact, how I heard about FUB was I was, I was, I, was um, I don't like to say teaching, but I was facilitating a script writing group. Um, and I've, because I've had, I've, I've done plays before and things like that and had them accepted. So I felt that I could do that, but I didn't charge money for it. So that's how I, Ali got in touch with me and said, oh, you know, she was trying to do all the activities, I think, in Brighton that didn't cost anything from just film nights or, 
you know, people just preparing food, vegan food or anything that was happening around Brighton and Hove. And then she launched um, FOB, which wasn't a university at that time. It was, it was called that, but it was just about anything. So it wasn't academic in that sense. Um, and then just went off my radar for a bit, carried on with what I was doing and stuff. Um, and the, some people came, I, I'm sure, through the FOB website that came to me. And then a bit later, I caught up with it and I said, oh, what, well, you're doing academia? That sounds good. I'll just come and see what's going on. It does give people a chance, uh, who live around here, to um, get learning in a, uh, a, of an evening if they want to get involved in education. FUB um, also um, helps people socialise, you know, so that's what it's done as well. So, um, so you've got lots of people meeting up here, or, or used to come here Monday nights, it's packed. Um, Tuesdays it's packed. <laughs> Thursdays is packed, so so of, of an evening it it, it, it does get um, full of people interested in the learning. I thought uh, it might brighten up some winter evenings, without any great expectation of anything else. Oh. Um, and because it was free, there was no sort of reason not to go. If I was, I had time. Don't particularly like TV. Um, why not go along and be with people? and learn something. Um, the reality of it, it quickly became really important to me. It means a lot to me that uh, we can meet as a group of students and tutors and we have uh, you know, a positive, equal, sharing, uh, educational exploration or interaction. I think part of working in a cooperative is not only working with other academics cooperatively, but trying to actually get back to that situation in which learning itself is a cooperative venture. And also just almost in any situation you're in, you're learning from people. And that's a good thing about FUB in lots of ways, is that you, you learn sometimes more from people than you do the people there attending than you do from the academics. Um, you sit there and you can sort of tell to some extent with groups on how sophisticated they are about the learning process because when I was an undergraduate people would always look to the lecturer if, it, if somebody raised a question they would look to the lecturer for a response or a reaction once people have gone to a certain gone through various academia they, they start to look at each other and start to talk to each other and I think that's always um, that's always a great point of liberation in a way, the Free University of Brighton is, is as much an experiment in freedom generally as it is in free education. Doing that in a cooperative way, you're also presenting another form of uh, relating to people, um, working together on something, yeah? in, which is an egalitarian way, which is a cooperative way, which is a participatory way, it's a democratic way in some sort of senses of the word democratic. I heard about FUB through actually somebody. I, I was doing um, a, a, a how do I? It's a, a well-being, a mental health well-being group called Grow, and somebody on Grow Group has seen the link to FUB, and so a few of us actually started on FUB when they signed up in a pub in the summer. Being here and learning and hearing and expanding and growing has meant that in my outside of hair life. I'm now taking risks that I wouldn't take before. Um, and I'm less critical of myself. Yeah, it's not, it's not for everyone, but I think, I think it should be. I, I, don't, I, I think it should be taught, because I think we ought to be taught how to think, or actually it's not really teaching how to think, it's, it's giving you permission to think in your own way. Uh, where previously I've sort of thought 
okay, I'm just not very bright, and that's the end of that, okay, I just, you know, I'm a good people person, I'm good at understanding emotions, I'm good at that kind of, you know, thing, but when it comes to brains and academic knowledge, I'm just not very bright, you know, and so, so actually it's taught me that I can learn. But FUB's so much more than just education, it, it is a, a wonderful community to be part of. I've so, so enjoyed um, the, you know, companionship of the other students who I've come to really love. I think there's quite a few quirky people, quite a lot of individual type, you know, people, uh, which I just love. But it's the feeling that you're doing something worthwhile, uh, which makes a difference to people, which can make a difference to maybe broader areas of uh, our lives um, and our social lives. Uh, you know, in terms of politics, it's a challenge to the sort of developments that are going on in our society and particularly in universities. The fact that FUB is available without barriers, free of cost and, and, and commitment even, mm. that you can take what you want from it, I think is an absolutely priceless thing actually. It's there and you can just come along. It means that I have um, a sense of purpose in being an academic, in being a philosopher that is uh, um, unavailable to me inside mainstream university in many ways. Um, it means I don't have to involve myself in a series of uh, interpersonal relationships that I often found complicated, difficult and somehow humiliating. It, in, it enables me to feel like, you know, uh, I am engaged in building something necessary and important and that has a possible future. And in the end, it means that I can have fun. The strap line for FUB is education for love, not money. Mm. And I just, I, I just feel this warmth. Oh, it brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> it brings tears to my eyes, actually, because I just feel such warmth to everybody who's involved in it. And, and I think what came out of the interviewing last week from people was what, what, what my reflection at the end of the day, actually, look at this, I'm crying, um, was one, that there's quite a lot of trust between the tutors and the students, and two, you know, we're getting to know each other, but we do it in a, in a, not in a social way as such, it's much deeper than social because we're talking about our opinions and really quite heavy topics. Uh, and I just think I'm a sort of person who is not too interested in small talk, generally. Um, and I suppose I kind of quite like being on my own a lot of the time, or I've got used to it anyway. Um, but I just find our interaction as, as a community really, really special. Really precious, I can't think of anywhere else I'd find such a thing.